Hello everyone, it's Toy House, and today I want to try to answer the question, is it worth it to farm rank 14 gear during pre-patch? In order to answer this question, I figure we look at a couple different things. Number one, what's the cost for each piece of gear? How hard will it be to get each piece of gear? And how easily will it be replaced in the Burning Crusade? So those are the three things we're going to talk through today, and then we're going to come to our conclusion at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. So what's the cost for each piece of gear so as we know in pre-patch we're most likely going to be playing world of warcraft patch 2.4.3 and that means that we're going to have uh honor as a currency as well as marks of uh different battlegrounds being used as currency as well as tokens to turn in to purchase gear so let's go through each of the different rank 14 pieces how much they cost and uh let's let's begin with the helm so the helm's going to cost 13,000 honor and 30 Alteric Valley marks. The shoulders, 8,000 honor and 20 Arathi Basin marks. The chest will have uh, 13,000 honor, uh, roughly, and 30 Arathi Basin marks. So we're seeing a lot of marks really being needed here, which in my mind is sort of what is going to be the hardest part. I feel like honor grinding is not too hard. It's actually just getting the marks. So you have to be like winning games in order to get this quickly. Uh, moving on to the legs, we've got 13,000 honor, 30 Warsong Gulch marks. Uh, boots will be 8,000 honor with 20 Arathi Basin marks. And by the way, these are for the epic pieces of gear. The blue version of the epic gear uh, is going to cost uh, significantly less honor, but actually the same amount of marks. And like I was saying before, I think that the marks are going to be harder to get than the honor. I feel like honor is not too hard to get. Uh, really, it's just getting those wins. So those are the main set pieces, the helm, shoulder, chest, legs, and boots. Uh, and now those are basically the costs. Um, you know, it, when you look at 30 marks, it sounds like a lot, but that's really just 10 wins. So if you can win like all Valley 10 times, um, Arathi Basin 10 times, Warsong Gulch 10 times, um, then you already have your chest, legs, and helm, assuming you have enough honor. And then really for... A Rathi Basin, you need 40 more marks. So really, you have to win like 20, uh, a little more than like 25 games of Arathi Basin to get everything. So keep that in mind, actually. Arathi Basin is probably what you're going to be playing the most uh, during this uh, honor farm. Okay, so uh, let's talk about set bonuses, right? Uh, really quick. So we can talk about, you know, how, how good is it? Is it worth it, right? Um, so... You know, if you're a mage, your set bonus will be reducing the cooldown of Blink by two seconds. I don't think that's super crazy, although Blink is really nice. It gets you out of stuns. It's a nice way to get away. Uh, but the Druid set bonus is really what gets me excited because it increases move speed by 15% while in shapeshift form and outside. Um, you have to be outside in order to get that 15% shapeshift move speed bonus. Um, that's pretty strong. Like when it comes to leveling, when it comes to PvP, move speed is a really big deal. And a 15% increase is very strong, particularly in battlegrounds like Warsong Gulch, if you're a flag carrier, uh, or just leveling. It's just super strong. So this set bonus is actually my favorite, and I think something that makes the set actually very worthwhile for druids. Now for rogues, the set bonus, and these are four-piece set bonuses, by the way, uh, three or four. The druid one is three. Uh, the rogue set bonus reduces gouge cooldown by one second. I think that's pretty good considering how tight rogues rotations can be and how helpful that can be. Um, but I don't think it's make or break. I do think it's it's pretty helpful though. Hunter, uh, it's reduced um, the cooldown of Hunter's Mark by one second. I think that's, uh, that's nothing. Uh, Warrior set reduces cooldown of Intercept by five seconds. That's pretty good. Uh, it's about a 25% 20, reduction in cooldown because Intercept's a 20 second cooldown. Um, so that's, that's decent. I wouldn't say it's super good, but Intercept's a nice ability, Gap Closer. Warlock Fear um, has a reduced cast time of 0.2 seconds. That's okay. Uh, I don't think it's that much, 0.2 seconds. Um, but the Psychic Scream uh, duration increased by one second for Priest. I think that's pretty good. It's a CC and decently strong. Paladin, Hammer of Justice cooldown reduced by 10 seconds. That's okay. And then for Shamans or Shaman, you get a 2% increased chance to crit with all shock spells. I think that's meh. So overall, uh, I think a lot of these set bonuses are kind of eh. They're not like crazy good. I think they're somewhat helpful. Uh, but the Druid set bonus, I think, is probably the strongest out of all of them. 
Now, that's pretty much for all the rank 14 gear. While you're doing PvP, there's also certain opportunities to get things like the weapons or Unstoppable Force, which is really good. Um, if you look at Unstoppable Force here, you can see it gives 2% crit and a chance on hit to stun for one second. If you actually look at the TBC version of Unstoppable Force, you can see that the critical strike chance of 2% has been changed to critical strike rating. So uh, as you can see here, the critical strike rating for the Unstoppable Force is 28. Uh, and the conversion here for critical strike rating to critical strike in the Burning Crusade is 22.1 critical strike rating is equal to 1% critical strike chance. And that's the same for spell critical strike rating. Um, so these are pretty much outlining, you know, these are the weapons, this is what they do, these are the costs. Um, so far, pretty good. I would feel pretty good about going into the Burning Crusade with like the Unstoppable Force if you're melee and use a two-hander and um, you get your full rank 14 gear. You're going to feel pretty strong, pretty, pretty uh, capable to do some of these quests and dungeons, I would say. Um, but let's talk a little bit about how hard it will be to get some of this gear. So I would say it's probably not that hard to get if you win more than 50% of your games. Now, that's a big if, right? Uh, I think when pre-patch comes out, you're going to face a lot of competition. You're probably going to get really quick queue times, um, probably more so Alliance than Horde. And, um, you know, it really takes really 10 wins to get those 30 marks of any given BG. Uh, of course, you know, that's pretty much your helm, your boots, um, you know, th those are just 10 wins, but you know, Arathi Basin, you're probably going to win like, I think 20 times, uh, or something like that, because so many uh, of the gear requires Arathi Basin marks. Um, so if you get a solid pre-made, I, I don't see it being too difficult at all. Actually, I could see you getting this gear in a couple weeks, but I think even a bigger question in answering, you know, if it's worth it to go after this during pre-patch is how easily will it be replaced? So... I can say right off the bat that I know for a fact that all weapons will be replaced by level 65 due to the Ring of Blood rewards. I looked at every single item, uh, all the Field Marshals weapons, all of the um, High Warlord weapons. They are all inferior to the uh, Ring of Blood rewards, which are incredible. In many cases, pre-raid bis um, for uh, TBC. So. Um, at most, you're going to have your weapon until level 65, um, and you do that Ring of Blood quest. And everyone's going to be doing the Ring of Blood like crazy, which brings up the argument it might be difficult to do Ring of Blood, right? The PvP aspect, if you're on a PvP server, it might be hard to do, but it's kind of a tangent. It does get replaced at 65 for sure. Now, when we look at the Unstoppable Force, I even think it gets replaced by Ursul's Claw, for example, for Druids and Hellfire Ramparts, because of the 200 attack power bonus. Now, you can see, you know, here, Ursul's Claw, you know, it, it has more stats. It has less damage and less DPS, but the 200 attack power, I think, more than makes up for that. Not to mention the Druids don't even benefit from the chance uh, chance to um, stun on hit. So it's, it's not even helpful. Uh, as a reminder, if you're not sure, Druids don't benefit from chance on hit from weapons uh, at all. So uh, if you have to make that decision to get a chance on hit with your weapon, uh, just go for the, the stat stick uh, for, for a Druid. Um, now let's look at something else. Let's look at um, just some other gear drops and ramparts, such as Raiments of Nature's Breath, which uh, is a healing piece offering 75 healing and 7 MP5, 7 mana per 5. Um, you know, compare that to the Field Marshal's Dragonhide Breastplate, and you can clearly see which one is better for a Resto Druid, the Raiments of Nature's Breath. So this PvP gear will probably be replaced pretty quickly in the Burning Crusade. You know, of course, the gear needs to drop in the first place, and of course, you need to be geared enough to be able to do the dungeon at all, so keep that in mind, of course. However, I do know from experience that if you do just struggle through the first handful of quests, the gear is amazing, and you quickly gear up since, you know, it seems that every single quest you do offers, like, an incredible blue or green item loaded with plus 40 of the stat you need. Uh, just taking a character, I remember uh, I played on Atlantis, I had level 58, walked through the portal, struggled to do those first quests, I'm not going to lie. But once you get that first piece of gear, it becomes much easier, second piece of gear, even easier, and each piece of gear is incredibly powerful. So I can say from experience, you definitely don't need to have good gear going into Outland, but it will certainly help, especially if you're on a PvP server or things like that. So we end up... Looking at all of the evidence we kind of talked through, you know, and, and, you know, we have to come to our conclusion here. Is it worth it 
to grind and get that rank 14 gear during pre-patch. So if you're a druid, I think it's kind of worth it because of the variety of stats on the PvP gear. It allows you to be ready to tank or DPS or heal depending on what's needed, which is great depending on what you want to do, if you want to dungeon grind, if you want to quest. I think that set bonus is incredibly powerful, the 15% movement speed. I think if I would keep that, uh, just because I probably would not pick up resto stuff, you know, if I'm leveling, I'm not going to be trying to spec resto. If anything, I would spec feral and try to tank dungeons um, just so I can stay feral and, and level quickly through outlands. You know, I think, you know, if it's impossible to quest or whatever for any reason, I think being geared is going to be uh, very, very helpful in getting those dungeon groups. So keep that in mind if you're on a PvP server. I think you might want to weigh getting geared up during pre-patch a little bit more heavily because you may not be able to do those quests to get that initial gear. I'd say ultimately for most classes, it's probably not worth the grind because of how quickly the gear will be replaced. If you're a rogue, pretty much all your gear is the same spec. It's all going to be damage dealing and anything you find will replace what you had before. Uh, like I said before, I think it's definitely going to be helpful though, because I know from experience going into Outland with a fresh 60 gear, it's going to really be a struggle at first, uh, especially if you're on a PVP server. And if you want to be a tank for dungeons in fresh 60 gear, I can tell you that's probably not going to be, not going to be happening. I mean, Hellfire Ramparts, those orcs hit harder than you think, and they have mortal strike. So, uh, it's, it's a lot harder than you might think. So... Uh, I do want to say, though, on one hand, uh, I do know from experience, uh, like I said, that it is a struggle at first with poor gear, but the quest rewards gear you up really, really quickly. So ultimately, my advice to you, probably not worth it to, to farm. It's going to take, it's going to be a lot of effort for not a lot of reward. And I think that if you're a druid, maybe it makes sense just for that 15% movement speed, but I would say it's marginally helpful and you don't have to do it if you don't want to. So with that said, guys, I would say don't worry about farming up the rank 14 gear. If you want it and it thinks it look think it looks cool like I do, I'd say go for it. But uh, if not, I don't think it's necessary. That's something you have to do. All right, guys, that's it for the, today's video. Thanks for tuning in. Always a pleasure talking with you. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.